respectfully disagree with you. My name is Annie Drian, and um, I'm a founder of Cosmo Studios and very and honored to have been the longtime collaborator of Carl Sagan. And I'd like to say that I think it's just the opposite of what you're saying from my perspective, humbly. One is that I think that science has a, ha, tolerates the unknown in a way that religion doesn't. My argument is not with people who search for God. My argument is with people who feel that our understanding of God is completed. And those are the people who make so much of our existence on this planet such a hell because they really think that they have the right to kill other people, to hurt them because of what they understand God's will to be. That's a very destructive thing. So science, science is the whole methodology of science is saying that we are not permitted these absolute truths that religion s pretends to have, that we do not know the answer to these questions. And not only that, but the little that we think we do know, if you can prove us wrong, we'll give you our highest reward. And that's part of the methodology. That's part of the whole functioning of the system itself. So yes, in answer to what Joan was saying earlier, scientists do terrible things. Science, scientists have biases. Religious people do terrible things and they have biases. But absolutely intrinsic to the whole scientific, the methodology of science is that error correcting mechanism, which says we must never lose sight of that. That's not in religion, that's not present at all. Talk about humble. It's the fact that we do science and that we can bring ourselves to see that little tiny earth in Carolyn's presentation. That is humility. What science has done for us spiritually is that it has been the only thing that I know of that has compelled us to wean ourselves of our infantile need for centrality. And that was present, that is very much the essence of so many religious formulations of where we come from, why we came to be. It's the sign of mental, mental health that we can bear to think that this planet was perfectly fine for four and a half billion years without us. That cosmic evolution goes on for 13 and a half billion years before we even get here. How long have we been in science? How long have we systematically been looking at nature? Not even 400 years. And yet science gets us out to Enceladus. It takes us out of the solar system. It enables us to wean ourselves of that spiritual narcissism which compelled us to be at the center of everything. So when it comes to humility, when it comes to uh, a tolerance for ambiguity and for the unknown. I think science worships the unknown. I think scientists are most comfortable in that place of not knowing. And that's where they live. And that's, that's the great strength of science. So I would respectfully disagree. Treasure Julia Sweeney's anecdote, uh, the actress who does a one-woman show called um, Letting Go of God, I think it is. And she's, de she's describing her gradual escape from the Roman Catholicism of her childhood. And she finally did escape. And, and she called herself an atheist. And this got into the papers. And her mother rang up in a sort of panic and said, well, I don't mind you not believing in God, but an atheist? <laughs> there is a certain amount of that uh, left over. But as for arrogance, if I could just come back on the, on the, on the arrogance, um, it seems to me that... To say what I've just said, which is that I can't know that there's no God, but I think it's the same as, as fairies, that's a sort of cautious thing to say. I'm not saying there's definitely no God, but the arrogance of a religious person who just knows, not only knows that there's a God, but knows it's this God, it's the Christian God, it's the Trinity, and the Virgin Mary was born of a virgin. I mean, they've got it all written down pat, and they've got absolutely not a shred of evidence for any of it. That's arrogance. It's the arrogance to say... Yes, this is definitely, definitely a trinity. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Virgin Mary was born of a virgin. Jesus rose on the third day. All that kind of thing, they're absolutely convinced of, with no evidence at all. Now, that's arrogance. When you have a problem, when something, and I just assume since nobody gets a pass, that you've had crises in your life, yes. that you've had suffering in your life and pain, what gets you through when you don't have a 
God or a, a faith to turn well, to turn um, to? Well, no, first of all, there's no obligation for anything to get you through. I mean, maybe, maybe nothing gets you through. And, and uh, I wouldn't put myself in that category. But even if I did, uh, that wouldn't be a good reason to believe in God. I had an Australian friend who's, who said he, he was trying to explain why it is you see so many old people in church. And he said, cramming for the final. <laughs> What gets me through? I mean, friends, um, the good fellowship, the arm around the shoulders, the, um, the comfort of real human companionship, the sympathetic look in the eye, the sympathetic smile, um, the squeeze of the hand. These are all immensely important. These are real, solid, warm human beings, not imaginary friends. Have you ever felt a, a transcendent moment in your life? Frequently, yes. Um, looking up at the Milky Way, especially in the Southern Hemisphere, um, looking down a microscope, looking through a telescope, um, just simply contemplating the Grand Canyon, the, the, the depth of geological time that's displayed before you uh, in, um, when you look at masses of geological strata, uh, looking at fossils, um, transcendent in the sense of the, the sort of upwelling of emotion that, that, that you get when you contemplate vastness of space, vastness of time, vastness of complexity in living things. Um, yes, transcendent, yes, supernatural, no.